the civil rights movement has been going on since since we got to America, you know, trying to gain rights as citizens. What happened in the 1960s is it became a mass struggle. The idea of the sit-in and, and the freedom rights is that anyone who had the, was brave enough to do that could do it by taking it into Alabama and Mississippi and the rural areas of the South. They were showing that even at its strongest points, segregation was vulnerable. And if we could defeat segregation at its strongest points, then the others would, would follow. Sometimes just having your body on a picket line, or having your body in a march is, is something because it adds up. You might not be doing so much as an individual, but as a group, you're having an impact. And that's, that's what movements are. I refused to be inducted into the military. Um, when I received my induction notice, I went down and, and protested there. And so I knew that at some point, I was probably going to be either arrested and go to jail for a few years, or an option that occurred to me was to just leave the country. Unfortunately, I never had to go, go to jail. By the time my case came up, um, Richard Nixon had um, abolished the draft, and the war in Vietnam was coming, uh, be beginning to come to an end. And I was one of the, the fortunate few who didn't have to stay in exile forever, but also didn't have to go to jail. And I didn't have to go to war. I had two brothers who went into the service, and one of them didn't come back. So, so it was, uh, you know, I, that could have been me. I saw on the television that Martin Luther King had been killed. And I think part of the shock was that sense of, why did he come back? It was not like he was the first martyr of the movement. You know, I'd been very upset in 1963 when the four children in the Birmingham church were, were killed. And it seemed like uh, this country just was, was not, in, not in a good place. I think you'd be very pleased to know that a new generation of young people inspired by his ideas and the ideas of other visionaries, um, we're trying to answer his final question. His final question is, where do we go from here? And so I think for him to see a new generation of young people kind of picking up that struggle and fighting it in their own ways. And I think learning lessons from the 60s, but not making the mistakes of the 60s including getting so dependent on one leader, uh, which put a lot of pressure on him. I go through periods of pessimism and optimism. I, I think that there's deep divisions in America, and that m makes me wary of people who have this idealized notion that Americans have always gotten together. After all, we had a civil war. We killed uh, hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, so we haven't all gotten along. And we've had this terrible racial division that has killed thousands of other people. On the other hand, King said that that's, that's the world. The world is a very diverse place. And it's not automatic that we're going to all get along and be part of a community. It's going to take a learning process. We have to learn to live together, to perish together.